Today, I'm gonna to talk about video switchers. Now, in the last video, I talked about projectors and connectivity, and some projectors have more options for connections in the back of the projector than others. But at a certain point, for some trials, there may be more parties or more devices that you need to connect, and so the connections that are available at the back of the projector might not be enough. That's where a switch comes in. Now, the way to think about a switch, it's kind of like the panel on the back of your TV is another way of thinking about it, where there might be multiple HDMI ports where you can plug in your cable box, your Blu-ray player, if you still have one of those, or an Apple TV, or a Roku box, or any other type of device that you want to use to send signals to your television. So what I wanna to do today is go over a couple of different ones that I've used over the course of my career as a courtroom AV guy. Uh, so you guys can get a feel for kind of not just the history of the devices, but I think by showing you some of those ones we used to use, it'll make the ones we're using now make a little bit more sense and a little less intimidating. So the first one that we used to use was this guy, which was a four port VGA switch. So it's called a four by one. And if we take a look at the back, you can see what it is. You've got four different HDMI ports that can go in and one HDMI port that can go out. And the way that we used to typically set this one up was that port number one would be a VGA cable coming from the plaintiff's table. VGA two would be coming from the defendant's table. VGA three would be coming from the document camera and VGA four would be coming from the DVD player. And so then you could just press either on this tiny little remote, which is the remote we used to use, uh, the ones that came with the device, um, or you could just look at these buttons and this each stripe would coordinate or correspond to one of the buttons up front. And you would just push one of the buttons to select which device in different places in the courtroom was gonna be shown. And of the four different inputs that could come in here, it would get connected from here to the projector. So with a single VGA cable to the projector, you could connect simultaneously up to four different devices. Now you can show all four of them kind of like picture in picture at the same time, not with this kind of box, but you wouldn't have to like plug and unplug one person or another in order to have that person's images show up on the projection screen. Now what this one also had was audio in. So the old VGA cables, the ones with the uh, blue kind of plastic ends on it and all the pins, those only took video signals. So if you wanted audio, like you were playing an impeachment clip or you were playing uh, other deposition testimony, you would have to have an audio cable, the 3.5 millimeter jack, like the headphone jack size, and run a long cable, uh, audio cable, to the relevant audio port, and then also have the audio going out from this switch to the projector, and then it would go from there. So that's what we used for a very, very long time, for very many years. Then what happened was all the laptops started switching over from VGA to HDMI. And we ran into a lot of problems switching or converting HDMI signals to VGA. Now notice on this box, what we did list is number four is the DVD player. We were able to successfully convert the DVD player's HDMI signal to VGA really easily with an HDMI, a powered HDMI to VGA converter. But we found that when we were doing that with a lot of laptops, the conversion wouldn't always work all that well. And generally, kind of my rule of thumb was, the more intricate the layers of IT were at a given firm, the more likely it wasn't going to like being connected to our systems. And so that, I don't, I'm not sure exactly why that is, but that's just kind of the general rule we found. And so we had to kind of go away from these VGA only devices because some of our clients had HDMI laptops. And so we switched from that, and for a brief while we looked at these, which are the same exact type of thing. It is a five by one, so five HDMI ports and one HDMI out. So you plug them in. Notice there's no audio jacks in here because HDMI cables carry both video and audio signals. But we could connect up to five HDMI laptops to this device at once and then put that out to an HDMI capable projector. And so that also kind of worked for us as well. But we ran into the problem of, while well, lots of people had now HDMI laptops, lots of people still had VGA laptops. So how did we mix and match? Well, what we ended up doing was we would have to then kind of figure out, well, are there two HDMI laptops and one VGA laptop? Well, then we'll kind of do everything on HDMI. Or if there's mostly VGA stuff, We'll do that and convert the HDMI and hopefully we don't run into any issues. And so we kind of have to ask people ahead of time what they were bringing and what they were 
uh, what kind of connections they had. And a lot of times our clients have no idea or they have expert witnesses that are gonna come in that are gonna bring their own laptops that they decide to incorporate that into the trial presentation at the last minute and no one ever knows what the expert laptop is and so it would just always be a mystery. So this caused quite a bit of headaches for us trying to support both HDMI and VJ at the same time. So a couple of years ago we switched over to these and this is much more robust but it also satisfied all of our needs. And so this is not the entire device, this is just the case that we kind of keep everything in. And what you're looking at here is actually a couple of things. At the top, this is the DVD player, which we still provide DVD players because a lot of any depositions in Illinois, we have evidence depositions, uh, which are kind of like depth designations, but much, much longer and much more boring. So we occasionally still need DVD players. The device that I wanna talk about today is this one that's in the middle. On the bottom, it's a distribution amplifier. Stay tuned, that'll be the next video. But this video, we're gonna talk about this. This is a six port presentation switcher scaler. So we've talked about switcher, and that's what these devices are. These switchers, they take in multiple inputs and output them to something else, like a projector. The presentation switcher scaler, I'm not really sure what the presentation part means, but the scalar part to me is really important because sometimes an input like a document camera, if it's an older one, might be a kind of a standard definition. So not quite high def, but standard def. Uh, a laptop might be a standard uh, high definition, 1920 by 1080. Uh, a newer laptop or an iPad might be 4K. And so it has a different resolution as well. And that could really confuse multi-monitor systems. So if you're projecting, if you're connecting to just a projector, that's one thing. But if you're connecting to a system where there's a projector, monitors at council tables, a monitor for the witness, a monitor for the judge, that kind of thing, having multiple devices with multiple resolutions can be problematic. So we've upgraded not only to a device that can take both HDMI and VGA inputs, but also can scale whatever it's taking in and output a uniform resolution, no matter what you're throwing at it. So that's been the most robust option for us. It's been a lot more expensive for sure, but it's been worth it. So here's basically what we're looking at. So let's put some of these cables away. So we're going to focus on this middle layer here. And the middle layer is the presentation switcher scaler. And so what we have over here are two HDMI ports. One of them is connected always to our DVD player. We have two VGA ports. So if there's VGA devices that need to be connected, for example, our document cameras still run on VGA. Uh, we haven't upgraded those yet. I still don't really see a need to, but I may uh, within the next couple of years. But if you have a VGA device, we can handle that. Or if you need to connect an HDMI device from a long distance or a VGA device from a long distance, we have HD Base T, which is HD Base T, and we'll talk about that also in a subsequent video, not for today, is a way of converting an HDMI signal in a way that you can send it over very long distances. Now, I've already made a video before about the maximum length of HDMI cables that I'm comfortable with. I know they make 100 foot HDMI cables. I know they make 75 foot HDMI cables. And in that other video, I recommended 50 foot HDMI cables as a plausible option. But these days, they've done something in Microsoft, especially with the Surface Pros, and also what I've been noting, at least so far, before the release of iPad OS, in the iPad Pros, that they don't like any HDMI cables that are longer than 30 feet. So if you need more than 30 feet, and trust me, most of you do, whether you think you do or not. But for now, what we have is six different inputs, a mix of HDMI, a mix of VGA, and then HD base T. And it has a mirrored output. So then the outputs come from this device down to our distribution amplifier, or it can just go directly to a projector, however you wanted to do it. But it's essentially the same concept as this guy. But in just a much more robust form where it's taking multiple different inputs, multiple laptops or iPads, however you wanna think about it, and sends a single signal out to something else. Ultimately, if you're looking to purchase something a little bit more robust to handle multiple parties where you don't always know what kinds of devices they're gonna be bringing, or you want at least the flexibility to handle VGA or HDMI, no matter what kind of device people are bringing, this is the kind of device that you're gonna be looking at. The cost goes go up quite a bit, but you also have 
a lot more functionality built into it. The other main thing, the last kind of thing, without trying to get too technical about it, that I'll go over, that separates this thing from this thing, this HDMI switch that we had, is that devices of this caliber have things called EDID management and HDCP. And those are two different protocols that exist in the HDMI world uh, that are essentially, for what, uh, to put it at a very base level, ways of preventing people from pirating content. Uh, and so it's something that has been installed into a lot of devices, pretty much at the behest of copyright holders, uh, people that make movies and <laughs> television shows. But the real world impact of that on people like me and for people who are working in a courtroom is that some of these switches, like these cheaper ones, when I switch from one input to another, it doesn't just switch what the jurors see. If I've connected my laptop in extended desktop mode or if I've connected an iPad uh, with trial pad on it, when I get switched off of me and it goes to someone else, my device, whether it's an iPad or a laptop, will think that it's been disconnected from the system. And so when it comes back to me, I have to reestablish that connection by turning extended desktop back on or turning back on the output monitor slider on trial pad. So I might have to turn that on as well. And so that can be really frustrating. It can be extremely confusing for people. Let's say you've trained a second chair to run the technology in a courtroom. If they don't have that functionality built in and so the signal gets lost every time they get switched away from them, that could be extremely confusing to them. And so that's something that you have to watch out for and you have to be really careful with devices like these. They're tempting because they're just so cheap, but uh, you really get what you pay for in this kind of category. So that's what switchers do. They allow you to connect multiple things, more than you might be able to connect depending on what's on the back of your projector and they allow you to then send that signal out to other devices like either a distribution amplifier or a projector or a multi-monitor system. So if you have any questions about switches, feel free to leave in the comments. There's a ton to talk about, but again, the point of these videos is to kind of give you a brief primer so that you can understand kind of what you're getting billed for if you're talking with a vendor or if you're looking at purchasing some of this equipment yourself, you can kind of know some of the things that you want to be able to look out for. But hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video and uh, I will see you in the next one.